How do you view the Indian woman right now? We've been interviewing women only and talking about identity and how that's changing. Do you feel like there's a sense of how that's received from a, a male perspective? Is there a conversation like that happening? Or have you noticed the changing attire of Indian women? Certainly, yeah. Um, you know, there's very clear differences between how my mother dresses and how my sister dresses. And I have this really cute picture of my, my, my grandmother, my mother, my sister and her daughter all sitting together and, you know, they span four generations and, you know, it's, uh, as you're asking me this question, it's bringing that image to my mind. My mother, uh, all my life that I've known her, she's always worn very traditional Indian clothes, you know, both my parents are Punjabi, but we were raised in Bombay, so they were, they lived apart from their respective families uh, at a time when long distance travel wasn't, I mean, it was not that it wasn't possible, not easy, this wasn't done as much. And you know, instantly, you know, I was talking to my mother, and she's like, I just bought a pair of jeans so, for when I can come and visit you. <laughs> and I go start laughing. You know, for one, I don't think she needs to, but, you know, unless she is totally not comfortable wearing an Indian um, or a Punjabi suit or whatever. But it was just, uh, it's almost funny to think of her in, in, in a jeans and t shirt because I've never seen her in a jeans and t shirt. So does it make you feel uncomfortable if she has, she would wear jeans or is it just unusual because she's never worn it's it? More, it's, it's almost calm. <laughs> but does that make you feel uncomfortable? I don't think so. Okay. Do you, I, okay, so for me and being raised here, like I do have this image, I think, not necessarily of me, but like Indian aunties always wearing Punjabi suits. Yeah. And so we're, seeing them in jeans and like t-shirts would not be like, Oh, this is not the normal Indian auntie. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's really interesting because I, yeah, I think I just think of, that's why I don't think of you as an Indian auntie. But if you were like in a sari or Punjabi suit all the time, I might. Yeah. I, it, it was not just my own mother. I mean, all my friends' mothers. I don't think I've seen, ever seen any of them in, in any sort of Western attire. Yet I've seen their sisters and our friends, you know, in, in all kinds of jeans and shorts and t-shirts and, you know, everything. And so it's... I was just saying, <laughs> does that change your... What, what is it? What are you saying, Indian auntie? Is that just like... Yeah, it's, I guess it's just like any... Any close female from the yeah, other generation, close that's from from like, I guess <laughs> Indian auntie is just like anyone my mom's generation, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what are the implications of that for both of you, of, mm -hmm. of a woman who would not wear Western clothing? You're saying it's almost comical. Does that also refer to her attitude or her personality in any sort of way or just being more I traditional? Think for me being raised here it definitely does because there's women like Rituja who I would like confide in and have these awesome conversations with and then there's women my mom's generation who you're I think a little like there's a little bit more self-censoring especially like you don't want to come across as like the American kid you I think I just like you treat them a little bit more like they're a little bit more Indian somehow um, and so I guess you're a little bit more like aware of like okay there's a cultural barrier here I have to be a little bit more careful about what I say about how I come across and like not offending this auntie um, I think yeah that's definitely and part of it like women from that perspective are more protective of their culture or view sort of a what a Western, like, openness to being Western as a threat of any sort, or, or how do you feel they... Yeah, that? I think definitely anyone who, like, openly, like, tries n to never wear jeans or t-shirts is very, has a tendency to be protective of sort of, like, their identity as an Indian woman. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that... And I think more than like just me like having this perception, they also like perceive themselves as like, we might be living in America, but I still wear my Punjabi suit every day, so I'm still an Indian woman living in America. I 
I know that, uh, you know, when we go back to India to visit, there'll be this almost insane desire to buy like the most traditional ethnic sari that you never had or your mom never had and you know like source it from the place where it was and it, it's more of bragging rights but then we do go back to those you know you want that paithani or you want that kochampali or you know like really ethnic sari so i think that plays into it and it's almost like um um, I remember when I was a kid growing up in India, I would listen to the pop songs here, you know, like music that came out from here. And now I'm completely out of touch. Now that I'm here, I look back to India to, you know, uh, listen to the music from home, to read the authors from home. So it's almost like this reverse, I don't know what that phenomenon is I, called. It's, you miss your home, right? I, I understand yeah. that because I used to hate TV serials and like TV <laughs> music when I was like in high school and like yeah. growing up at home. Um, and then I was in college and like I start to feel uh, just like whenever you ha you know you have those moments where you miss home and I'd like go online and watch some TV serials or like listen to some Hindi music and I would never do that before college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's just missing what, like this idea that's a part of home. Yeah. yeah. idea that um, maybe you're choosing to, to dress more Western to show kind of a, an idea of awareness of, of non-Indian culture or of Western and being a kind of a status of power education. Is there also mm -hmm. another level of going beyond that where you incorporate both of them as a way to kind of show your freedom of choice and identifying with your culture? So I think Indian clothing right now is in an interesting flux of like there's this super formal Indian suit that you can wear and then there's like more casual like kurtis and tops that are like they look Indian but they're not traditional Indian wear um, and I think I've taken to wearing a lot of that and mixing that into my wardrobe. <laughs> had our conversation in February, um, there was, at around that time, there was an article in India Today that had just come out about all these top CEOs and their clothing that they wear. And um, there is uh, this um, lady who's the um, CEO of ICICI Bank, which is one of the largest banks, um, and she dresses exclusively in saris. Uh, and she will wear gorgeous and I think most of them are like cotton or silk that mm -hmm. kind of sorry so I think that says a lot about who you mm -hmm. are what you are um, you know you can practically tell what profession that person is by looking at the sari what do you um, think it means to be a modern Indian woman like do you think that your your mom's modern I would say no in my home, both in our home, both parents performed a set of roles, gender-driven roles. You know, my mother did most of the things that happen um, within the home. And the father takes care of things that have, have to do with outside the home. And so they function together as a team. And they have a hard time functioning without each other. I mean, my dad knows very little about how to do manage it. And he had to live apart for a while, for many years, for his job. And so he had to learn the hard way. So in that sense, my dad isn't strictly modern either. Even though he has traveled the world and speaks very good English and that type of thing. But are we a modern family? I would say yes. Even though I wouldn't attach the modern description to either of them individually, if that makes sense. I mean, I've never really thought about this before, but we tend to think of these questions as being this or that, but there's always this sort of huge, you know, gray area, there's almost a pendulum that swings mm -hmm. between one and the other, and on a daily basis, you're in, you know, they have very progressive ideas about many mm -hmm. things. They have very traditional ideas about many things. I don't think Indian clothing will die. I think we are so adaptable to any kind of clothing, you know, and there's uh, there's so much depth in the Indian clothing itself too. I think we end up reviving some things actually, which have 
fallen, you know, or, or they've died. Like, you know, we were talking about the Navari Sari, which is like this long nine yard Sari, which Maharashtrians used to wear a long time ago. It stays in style, it, it, it has never gone away, mm -hmm. I feel. Um, so I, I don't see a threat at all to, to the way Indian mm -hmm. women have dressed for centuries. Chunni in Rajasthan language and it's of cotton and it's a very long and you can put like this way and over here and then we love sleeveless clothes like for some reason and it's not very like I mean now India is becoming more and more modernized but in the past you know did you like wearing these kind of clothes or uh, it, it, I just didn't have a choice. It was a uniform and that is, we had to deal with it. <laughs> Mom wouldn't let me pack any like t-shirts or tank tops, um, but we went to Mumbai first and like we get off the plane and half the girls are wearing tank tops. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> yeah. she's happy, she's My small. grandma's like, it's their choice. Like, if I saw how deeply traditional my parents are in terms of, you know, how, you know, they had, they had had plans for their children's wedding and you know, 